Fluctuating temperatures can create dangerous, unstable ice. And when snowmobilers are rescued after falling in, their machines are often left behind. And it's up to towing companies to get the snowmobiles out. News Channel 9's Nicole Somavilla says this month has been recovery after recovery. This is, has been the busiest so far, for sure. Derek Field usually has two or three recovery calls each winter. This year, we had seven calls in one weekend. He blames it on a combination of winter warm-ups, cool-downs, intermittent rain, and inexperienced drivers eager to get on the ice. They forget that, you know, you, you got to actually spud their way out. Often ending up in cold water surrounded by ice that Field and his team have to navigate. It's kind of blind going into it. We try to get people to get a, a good GPS location of where the machine went in, um, you know, how much ice and, you know, if there's any, any, you know, water flow coming in. Once they get there, they drive their way out as far as they can, taking their equipment the rest of the way on foot and using plywood as a sturdy workplace. We'll start cutting holes, you know, to, to deploy the camera down to see if we can verify it's, it's underneath us. Once we bring the airbags down, we'll fasten them to the handlebars somehow. For a sled this size, you typically have three airbags? Um, Is that enough typically to two. Once they're recovered, um, airbagged up to the surface, you have to find a way to get in the good ice, which that's when the chainsaw comes in and you have to cut a channel. Getting these machines and their team back to safety, something Field believes can be avoided if snowmobilers are checking the ice before hitting the gas. Don't risk your life over a fish. But if you do get stuck, know there are professionals who can help. In Canastota, Nicole Somavilla, News Channel 9. Now, the state's Department of Environmental Conservation requires sunken snowmobiles to be removed from the water to keep the oil and gas from leaking out.